This week's shout out goes to DeviantArt creator Listless Rondo. To view more spectacular pieces like the ones before you now, be sure to click the link to her page below and provide her with as much support as you can provide to this very talented artist. Thank you so much for granting me the honor of commissioning you. If you too would like to have the chance to have your art featured on this channel and receive a shout out, be sure to send me art for either this channel, fandoms I am involved in, or pieces you are particularly proud of to either my email, Twitter, or Tumblr. All links are on screen now and in the description. I would be more than happy to help support you to get the recognition you rightfully deserve. Now, sit back and relax my patience as we delve into tonight's readings. Number 1 The summer after I graduated high school, my local Starbucks was hiring and I was in need of a job for summer money. After they hired me, I worked a pretty normal job until they decided to start opening our store for 24 hours. Since I was on summer, I didn't have anything to do in the mornings, so they put me on the night shift. Or more like the early hours of the morning shift. They had me working from 10pm to 4am. As you would expect, I didn't get much business due to the late hours. The only time I really got anyone was at the end of my shift when people with early jobs or fellow night shifters from Walmart or other stores surrounding the Starbucks would come to get some survival caffeine. I worked alone with nobody else in the store since there was so little business during the hours. It did get pretty creepy there in the dark, with nothing but the dim Starbucks lights and coffee to keep me company. But it smelled good and was really relaxing, so I mostly enjoyed the job. I was always kind of creeped out by the Starbucks logo, that weird sea monster looking thing that stares into your soul. I was even more terrified of it after learning that the logo was actually a mermaid type creature that had two tails and killed people called a siren. Spending hours alone in the dark shop with hundreds of those things staring at me definitely wasn't my favorite part of the job, but I knew they were harmless paper cops. One night on the job, it was dead silent out. It was around 1am and there was no business. The streets were pretty clear, except for the occasional car passing through the complex, and I was alone in the shop like usual for my shift. I was taking advantage of the free Wi-Fi and playing on my laptop at the counter when I heard a small bang behind me. A stack of cups was lying on the floor. I picked the stuff up like this wasn't unusual and went back to my browsing. It happened again, this time Frappuccino cups. I figured it was just drafty and the cups were being knocked over since they were so lightweight. I went back to my browsing and there it goes again. Now. There were several stacks of lids on the ground. I groan as I go to pick them up and wonder if I should turn the AC off. As I was in the middle of cleaning up the mess, a bang came from the kitchen area where we make the desserts like cake and pops. I was confused and slightly freaked out as I was the only one there. I entered the kitchen the swinging door closing behind me. I saw nothing out of the ordinary except the Starbucks poster that we had hanging in the kitchen had fallen down. I rolled it up and sat it on the counter, making a mental note to tell the manager that it fell down next shift. 
I went over to the thermostat to turn off the AC since the draft was knocking everything around. I turned it off and the next 30 minutes were silent. While I sat browsing on my laptop, my superstition got to me and the thought that everything that fell down had the logo with that creepy siren on it. I laughed at myself because of my stupid theory because of course everything would have the siren. It was the logo. I was getting tired, so I made myself a coffee. I was sipping my drink, browsing Facebook, when my headset beeped. That was strange, since we barely ever had business at this time of night, but it's not unheard of. I greeted them and looked up at the monitor, but nothing was there. That same thing happened several times up to that point of 2.30. It was angering me, and I thought some dumb teenagers were just trying to have some fun pranking me. But even after walking outside to check for people, there was nobody there. No trace of a car either. When I walked back into the shop from checking outside, I found that the coffee machine was on and spewing foam and coffee everywhere. I freaked out and turned it off immediately. I had turned the coffee machine off after making my coffee, so I had no idea how this happened. Later, I needed to use the restroom, so I went quickly in case any customers came while I was away, and when I came back, there were coffee cups stacked in a pyramid on the counter. That was extremely weird since they obviously can't stack themselves. It was probably the teenagers I thought. I was debating whether or not to call the cops since they were harassing me but decided to just get back to browsing since they had to eventually get bored and leave and maybe go harass someone else like the Walmart employees. I glanced down at my computer for about 10 seconds and when I looked back up, there were cups everywhere. Stacks and stacks of cups in the shape of a pyramid. I guessed around 50 stacks. I was terrified. Someone was here at the shop with me and whatever it was, it wasn't human. I scanned the place but there was not a trace, not a single piece of evidence of anything. I knew my boss would flip if she found this, so I started unstacking them. When I finished, it was around 3.15. I just wanted my shift to be over so I could get out of this place. Then, there came the bang. It was from the kitchen again. I was more angry than I was scared at this point. I just wanted whatever this thing was to stop bothering me. I flung the door to the kitchen open and was instantly horrified. The Starbucks poster with the huge siren on it was hung up again. Pots and pans were stacked in pyramids on the ground and hundreds, maybe even thousands of pictures of that Starbucks logo with the creepy sirens were placed everywhere. The wall, the floor, the ceiling, everywhere. I ran from the kitchen and I ran to the door. But the door, it was locked. A cup with the siren facing right at me was just sitting on the handle. I took out my key from my pocket to open the door and the key was flung from my hands by some, dare I say it, supernatural force. I dove for it and wedged it from the strong and human grip of the force and ran from the shop. I ran until I reached Walmart and there were some of the night shifters there that I had befriended from before from their coffee runs. I told them what happened and they seemed like they were totally confused. They totally thought I was insane. I brought them back to the store after we phoned 911. The cops weren't there yet, but when I got back, everything was back to normal. 
The kitchen was spotless. The thousands of sirens gone. The cups were perfectly stacked and neat. Everything was normal. The Walmart employees asked me where everything was, but I was too stunned to answer. It had been exactly five minutes since I fled the Starbucks. No human could ever clean up this fast. But when the police got there and investigated, they found absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Gently put, I was horrified. I quit my job and started working at Walmart where there were other people and no creepy sirens. I can never work at Starbucks again. I can never go there again. It's just too much to look at that creepy siren logo in the face every time I go to take a sip. It may seem like I'm overreacting, but I didn't tell you what happened when I left for my shift that night. As I grabbed my things and tried to wrap my mind around what the hell had just happened, I walked out the door, and as it was closing behind me, I heard. in a creepy, horrifying voice. There was nobody there, just my reflection in the glass door and the Starbucks logo, the siren staring at me. And I swear that I wasn't hallucinating its lips moving as it talked to me. Number 2 I was 13 when I had my first pumpkin spice latte. Dad had taken me to Starbucks on the way to school, and as soon as we walked in, I saw their poster advertising the drink. Everything about the ad screamed warmth. The mug it showcased was a gentle beige contrastingly sweet against the light brown wood of the table on which it sat, surrounded by artistically placed autumn leaves and festive gourds. The contents of the mug were centered in the image, showing off the perfect dollop of creamy foam with caramelly tints of espresso running through it. At the top, lovingly whispered by the deft hand of a skilled, caring barista was a sprinkle of nutmeg. It called to me. I eschewed my normal caramel macchiato and requested a grande pumpkin spice latte. I waited anxiously with dad by my side. He sipped his black coffee and suggested we sit for a little while. We were actually running early for once. I sat, shaking my leg with anticipatory excitement. The cafe smelled different that day. I'd grown accustomed to the thick, imposing aroma of dark roasted coffee and the occasional hint of sweetness as a customer's blueberry muffin was toasted. That day though, Gripping the reins of the dark roast and riding it to a new and alluring place was something else. Something exotic. My head swam as I realized the exotic smell was, in fact, the spicy melange of ingredients within a pumpkin spice latte. The same latte I'd soon taste. After what felt like an eternity, my order was ready. Alexander, the barista, waved me over. I did my best to avoid sprinting, but my rush was obvious. <laughs> oh, easy there, Prince, Dad called. I slowed down a bit and giggled. I was his prince. I reached the counter and accepted my drink. 
in the tiny mouth of the lid, I could see the sprinkled spices adorning the cap of white foam. With my eyes closed, I inhaled the steam rising from the hole. The scent was an embrace from a ghost, a non-corporeal expression of love and comfort. The first sip was transcendental. At that moment, I knew what it felt like to believe in something bigger than myself. Each day before school, Dad would take me to Starbucks to get another pumpkin spice latte. Its effect on me didn't dull, nor did it taste any less special. As early autumn reds decayed into late autumn browns, I found my mood better than it ever had been in my short life. I never knew it was so easy to be happy. At 6.51am on December 1st, 2005, Dad and I walked into Starbucks. At 6.52am on December 1st, 2005, my happiness was torn from my chest and dashed against the rocks. The pumpkin spice latte was a limited time product. Alexander told me it'd be back just in time for fall the next year, then asked if I'd like to go back to my caramel macchiato, entombed in disbelief and disappointment. I nodded. The following days were a blur of greys. My mood had been strangled. Dad would ask over and over what he could do to make his prince happy. I didn't need to tell him though. He knew, and there was nothing he could do about it. December slouched towards Christmas, a holiday I'd always loved. Not anymore though, now that I'd seen the world through a lens of happiness and warmth, nothing looked the same without it. Quite the contrary, it all looked fake. Vulgar. When I closed my eyes on Christmas Eve, I prayed for Santa to bring me blindness or death. On Christmas morning, I woke up to Dad standing next to my bed. That was a little tradition he and I had had before Mom passed away. They'd both come up and shake me awake and carry me downstairs to see what Santa had brought. Now that it was just the two of us, he wanted to keep the tradition going. Even in my despondence, I still appreciated it. Dad held my hand and we headed down the steps. Tears had started to flow without my knowing. We reached the Christmas tree in the living room. Only one present stood underneath. It was small and wrapped with bright green paper. I looked at Dad with confusion. He simply just smiled and beckoned to the gift. I sat cross-legged under the tree and tore away the paper. My soft weeping grew into pitiful bleeding. Why would you do this? I whispered to Dad, my breath heavy with sobs. In my lap, beneath the shiny torn paper, was a cheery autumn Starbucks mug. The same one from the poster I'd seen on that transformative day. I was baffled and hurt, but Dad stood, still smiling. Come with me, my dear Prince. I obeyed and rose to my feet, following his long stride out of the living room, down the hallway and into the kitchen. Dad looked into my misty eyes and whispered, Merry Christmas, sweetheart. He opened the cellar door. A faint but familiar and exquisite aroma entered me. In my surprise, I nearly dropped my present. Why don't you go see what Santa brought you? Dad suggested. I ran down the 14 steps with the same enthusiasm I had when we ran across Starbucks to receive my first pumpkin spice latte. 
This time, Dad didn't tell me to slow down. I reached the bottom, turned the corner, and there, on a makeshift bar, was a new espresso machine. I gasped. Behind the bar, manning the machine, was Alexander, the barista. He smiled and stared wide-eyed as Dad reached the bottom of the stairs and placed himself by my side. Go ahead, Prince. Tell the nice man what you'd like. My voice quivered at first, but I finished my request with enthusiasm and strength. May I please have a pumpkin spice latte? Alexander, still smiling, nodded. He began to work. The coffee was ground, and the thick espresso drooled out of the machine into the bottom of the mug. With a hiss of steam, the milk was frothed. Warm milk joined the espresso in the mug, followed by a generous dollop of ethereal foam. Then, Alexander picked up a large shaker, and I knew what had to be inside. With three expert shakes, a pixie dusting of pumpkin spice kissed the foamy head of the latte. He picked up my mug and held it out. I walked up to the bar and carefully took the mug from Alexander's hand, thanking him. I noticed for the first time he didn't have any legs and was strapped to a rolling stool. Oh, I'm sorry about your accident, Alexander, I said with sincerity. He didn't say anything, but kept smiling. I saw a small cut in his neck, and wondered if his accident had made it so he couldn't talk anymore. Merry Christmas, he stared at Dad. I took a sip from the mug, and for the first time in nearly a month, it seemed like I could see in color again. The world felt right, and I was happy. My tears were drying as I took Dad's hand. We turned the corner and headed up the stairs. We reached the landing, and Dad switched off the basement light. Oh, he always hated to waste electricity. You can have one every morning now, Prince, Dad informed me. As long as I'm around, I'll make sure you get whatever you need. I hugged him, feeling the warmth of his body against mine. It was nearly as, it was nearly as pleasant as the mug against my palm. And he was right, too. Things have been wonderful ever since Alexander came home.